Good morning. Hello. Happy Monday. Oh my gosh. We're having another Monday. Welcome to all of you. I am gosh over 10 minutes late. I hate being late and uh, it just, it, I, I queued it up several times and I'm hoping that we're online and that everybody sees us, hears us. So welcome. If you are new joining, this is our Monday, Wednesday, and Friday natural health news live show where I share with you COVID news updates, uh, literally around the world, and also domestically uh, details that are happening in the States, as well as health and wellness tips to keep you and your families healthy and safe during this pandemic that is not going away anytime soon. So welcome to all of you. Um, I have a lot of things I'm going to share today because today's topic is uh, the most critical body system that you want to focus on enhancing, optimizing, repairing, rebuilding, that is 80% responsible for your immune system. And that is your gut. So if you are having any issues with constipation, IBS, bloating, gas, um, have had polyps or abnormal um, screens uh, with colonoscopies or family history of colorectal cancer. These tips are going to be really helpful. Also, for many of you who have a weakened immunity or any autoimmune dysfunctions, this video, uh, the latter half of this after the news related details uh, will be critical. I'm going to share with you six important foundational building blocks to building and supporting your digestive health. So if you're excited, give me a thumbs up. I am very excited. I also have a free giveaway. Yay! I love giveaways. Um, so for the person who comments uh, on the the replay in the comment box, we'll have a 24 hour uh, kind of window where you comment and I will choose a lucky winner to get one of these products I'm going to highlight. So welcome to all of you who's having a Monday. <laughs> So I'm very excited before we kick off. I just want to um, let you all know one, we've got Pat and Ron on and I'm hoping Ron's doing well. We're excited. He's back at home and um, very exciting for all of you watching my journey on Instagram with our uh, monarch caterpillars that showed up on my milk lead a week or so ago. I am, um, I'm, I'm drinking relaxed tea in here and my life is good cup and they're butterflies because I'm very excited. We ended up having two that I brought in and um, I'm very grateful for Jan, one of our viewers in Hawaii, who has even called me and texted me. It's just really helpful information. The two caterpillars, they started the J-Hang last night. They built their little silk buttons and we are witnessing the beginning of the metamorphosis. So it will happen today. I'm going to be hopefully be able to kind of see it as it happens really excited. This is really fun. I've never done anything like this. And with Gabriel, the life cycle, very exciting. So anyway, that's a really big highlight for us. <laughs> Good, take the wins. Okay, let's dig into some COVID news. Who's ready? All right. So worldwide, uh, the world's at 35.179 million cases of COVID. Uh, the US is at 7.5 million. Uh, just so you have an understanding of other uh, nations globally, India is at 6.6 .6 million. Brazil's at 4.9 million and Russia's at 1.22 million. The common thread is the US and India um, and even Brazil, but they've slowed down. We are still increasing. And uh, here domestically in the US, we had a bad day yesterday. We had over a thousand fatalities. So we lost a thousand US lives due to COVID. Um, and we have now a total of 213,000. Uh, so it's actually 213 thousand and fifty six lives lost to COVID just so happens now we have COVID is probably the greatest security risk here in the US uh, because our president has been tested positive with COVID uh, I'll, I'll get to some news about what is now potentially going to be a devastating um, super spreading event in the world of politics but I want to share with for uh, share some international news. We have a lot of viewers. About forty percent of my viewership is international. Um, so Paris, they are um, closing the bars again for two weeks. They are very concerned um, that they have an increase in COVID cases in the Paris Paris region. Also, New Zealand, exciting uh, to announce that they've lifted the COVID restrictions in Auckland, one of the islands. Um, that's re lifting on Wednesday. 
um, if going back to Europe, the UK, uh, their numbers have doubled in a week. And so that is the kickoff to the second surge there. Um, it's been happening, but the, the rate of exponential growth is, is freaking people out. Um, I also want to note that um, you guys know I lived in Japan for a year. Um, and one of the very noteworthy Japanese fashion designers, he actually lives or lived in Paris. His name's Kenzo uh, Takanda. I think it's Takanda. Um, he, he died of COVID this weekend. And so that's a huge loss in the world of, of, of Japanese fashion. And then Poland and Italy both are having increases. So over the weekend, Poland had, um, uh, have, have matched some of the records back in the spring and same with Italy. They had the highest daily increase since April. So there's a lot of concern about what's happening in Europe and the spread. If we have any Europeans on comment and uh, comment down below and let us know how things are going. Um, I know many of them will probably, Oh gosh, I hope that wasn't a bird. Sometimes we have birds that will hit um, our window. Oh, and I'm hearing Gabriel apparently his class has a, uh, fire drill happening at the school. So you might see him, he might pop in uh, here randomly. Okay, so um, just in terms of what's happening in Europe, that's a, bi a big, big concern. Now here, let's take it domestically. So, um, you know, my caveat for all of you, I, I'm, I'm a natural health and wellness show. Uh, we just happen to have COVID that's now moved into the political sphere. Um, so I am going to make some comments, but I want uh, to just kind of preface this with please refrain from posting any political comments on the, the chat or on the comment box down below. Um, I'm deleting those because I just, it's too just divisive, but I, but it is important to note, um, you know, our, uh, our, our president has been um, on the cusp of COVID denying um, and we've had a slower response to COVID than we've seen other successful countries. And now we have a situation where uh, they're looking at a super spreading event uh, from last Saturday as being potentially the source. We have 16 uh, confirmed positive cases from the super spreader event. Um, and this timeline right now um, is really kind of spotty in terms of exactly when uh, the, the president was actually positive. There's been really bizarre, inconsistent, um, even bordering lying from some of the doctors and the administration about when um, he took a test that was positive. Uh, what we do know is Wednesday, the, the doctors had identified Wednesday was the day he took a positive test. As many of you know, we had a debate that night. Um, the debate is also proving to be a potential super spreading event. So that therefore gives us some conclusion that it, he was possibly positive at the debate. Um, and the other thing that uh, we know with the disease progression of this virus is that uh, individuals don't test positive one day and then all of a sudden end up needing oxygen and or being hospitalized. So there's a five to seven day kind of incubation time of when symptoms would start to begin to occur. So that even backdates that it's possible that Saturday, Friday or Saturday before was when um, there was transmission. With that, um, I do wanna make a note that there, I guess the debate had an honor system. And so ordinarily there would be tests taken, but the team arrived uh, late and, and avoided having a test. And so we don't know conclusively. Regardless, uh, we now have some really interesting kind of uh, things happening where the president is on a lot of the medications I've highlighted to you. Some are in trial. Some are very experimental. I think he's now one of 12 or 13 people who've gotten this unique cocktail. Um, but at the end of the day, the big concern right now uh, medically is this uh, dexamethasone that uh, I think he had his first dose Friday or Saturday. Um, it it plays kind of wacky things with the brain. And, um, you know, the concern obviously is lung capacity, CT scans that are uh, not clear, uh, risk of pneumonia, and then also neuro COVID. I've highlighted that a lot. So we, you know, all of us, regardless of your stance, we need to send healing energy um, outward and hopefully things run its course in a quick and easy fashion. 
Um, but there's, it, it, it's definitely, you know, it puts a lot of question as to whether, uh, you know, there's knowingly exposing individuals and going to events and, you know, we might see additional events, fundraisers and rallies being also sources of um, super spreading, which, you know, I'm sorry, but medically speaking, that's gross negligence. Um, so that's our situation here domestically. Um, I do want to highlight a few things. Uh, New York City, we've seen some numbers, uh, you know, the numbers right now from yesterday in California, Texas, Florida, New York, Georgia, Illinois, and Arizona, those are the top states. Um, they're kind of leveling and staying where they've been, nothing noteworthy. But I do want to make a note um, that New York is locking down virus hotspots. There are actually nine zip codes in the New York City area um, that they are locking down because they're starting to see increases in those communities and they're trying to thwart uh, and prevent any type of um, any type of uh, outbreak again. So New York is 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 also they've got a lot of data and I, I it seems to me that they're using a lot of the data from the spring to preempt potentially a fall outbreak, which is brilliant. That is, you know, learning from our past, utilizing the epidemiological information, stats, science, and research to make uh, very smart decisions. That is uh, the antithesis of gross negligence. Um, so statewide, we have nine states that have increased um, in the last week. That being said, um, the states, the 31 or 32 states that were on the increase, they're still kind of maintaining. They haven't dipped. We only have, uh, it's a total of nine. Oh, only three states have actually are in a decline right now. Um, Saturday alone, uh, these four states had the highest numbers, uh, Kentucky, Montana, uh, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. And the projection is that weather might be the indicator of why uh, it, the influence of now we're coming inside a little bit more. Kentucky, the main source there is that schools returned. And so they're attributing some of the increases to, um, to school returning. The other thing that I want to make a note is in Wisconsin, their positive percent, uh, their positive test percentage is 22%. So 22% of all the tests returned are actually coming back positive. That is a massive amount of spread. Ideally, less than five is kind of that threshold you want to stay at. There are four times that. And the highest per capita of new cases are in North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. Um, so that's kind of where we're at here domestically. I don't have a lot of uh, new research or anything like that to share um, as you can imagine, here domestically, a lot of the focus is on the president's situation. Uh, but I do want to share some news that I found noteworthy and wanted to share with you. Um, Nigerian scientists have developed their own PCR test that um, has a 40 minute return, which is big, because right now our PCR tests about 24 hours is the return time. Um, they've identified this new, they've created this new test and the cost is $25. Now, Nigeria is doing that. The scientists in Nigeria are doing that uh, because they had shortages just like we did. And they've come up with this as we saw a lot of that kind of innovation here in the US when we had our peak. Uh, the other thing I wanted to know, Virgin Atlantic um, has started COVID testing their uh, flight staff. So the uh, flight attendants, as well as the pilots, um, with the hopes that that might encourage um, travel. The other thing that I want to make a note of is Air Asia, uh, and this is a budget airline, southeastern budget airline that um, that they've actually cut or ceased their operations into Japan. Um, and so that that might be I don't I couldn't get the gist of it, but I have a feeling it might be Japanese, you know, the government orient kind of focusing on limiting the spread. And it also might just be, you know, the airline industry across the board has been hit and, um, you know, people are really seeing a dip in Southeastern Asia, Asian travel. Um, the other thing I want to highlight, and this is really positive. You guys know I love to um, highlight as positive as I can get. Um, Portugal, the positive with COVID in Portugal, apparently bike makers are just making tons and tons of bikes. Uh, so people are getting out and biking and hitting the countryside 
and uh, taking advantage of the social distancing that being out in public allow. So I thought that was kind of fun. The other thing I do want to highlight is research. And I don't know, I don't, I was looking through my, 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 I have a huge pile of paper. I keep everything that I've reported to all of you. Um, I didn't see if I had reported this out and I didn't see it in my notes, but the um, UNMC research um, came out in middle of August about the three, they call them the three V's of super spreading events. And this is really critical. I mean, obviously I've highlighted this whole white house, potentially the, well, the debate is definitely. So the white house Saturday press conference for a Supreme court nominee, that's a super spreader event. Uh, the debate is proving to be a super spreader event. And what's really interesting is the people behind the scenes, there are 11 individuals behind the scenes uh, from the debate, debate setup, you know, miking up the candidates, all of that, those folks have come down, they're, they're positive. Um, but what this research did is it what it looked at what leads up to and what, 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 what is the distinction between a normal event and a super spreading event? And what they extrapolated were these three V's. One is the venue, two is ventilation, and three is vocalization. And so ventilation uh, what kind of is really a, an important ingredient for a super spreader event is for it to be uh, minimally social distance. So packed in, you know, less than six feet of space in between. It's indoors, enclosed. Uh, ventilation is limited airflow, meaning it's enclosed as well. Uh, and vocalization is the aerosolization from loud uh, from volume. So if it's loud, people are yelling and the more yelling has more aerosolized volume, the number of people who are there, if they're singing, cheering, uh, lack of mask wearing, all of that. And by the way, that super spreader event, that Saturday event, there was, there, there were no masks. I think, you know, if you look at the kind of sequencing there's, there's now it's all over. You can look at the charts and see as these positives are starting to pop up and it'll just start to accelerate. Um, those individual, nobody's wearing masks. It's just, it's just craziness that, you know, a complete, uh, you know, the DC has guidelines, um, apparently it's exempt on the property. Um, the CDC has guidelines, all of that was just thrown out. And so, uh, the, it, you and MC research, I actually want to highlight, they actually highlighted a Korean call center. And this is really interesting, this study, and this got cut off a little bit, but they looked at this Korean call center and this is the building makeup, you know, where the cubes are and, and the blue is where there are positive uh, cases. And what they identified is that um, even social distancing and even having like stairwells and elevators that the air you know, it's possible these people kind of went around here and they went all went, you know, there you have one person over here, another person here in the bathroom exposure. But this is indicative that even being over six feet away uh, is, a, is problematic. And um, what they find is that gatherings that are indoors are 18.7% more are 18.7 times more likely to be a super spreading event. Um, and, and that, that is void of, that doesn't even include mask wearing. Um, now, the other thing is distance. Uh, 15 or more feet is the critical uh, distance that they found if it's less than 15 feet, you can still have a super spreading event. That again goes a little bit uh, opposed or uh, extends out the CDC guideline of six feet. It's always been a question, you know, in March and April, I've highlighted to you guys, you know, we know a little bit more. We know that the volume I've highlighted to you guys that the volume, we know the particulates can go out 20, I think it's 23 feet. So even 15 feet is not uh, enough. Um, so that is something that I just wanted to highlight. Um, but that is really, really critical. And, you know, for many of you guys tuning in, you may not have been with me in March and April, but we actually had our wedding ceremony planned on the 20, I don't remember, <laughs> March 20th, March 20th. And we had to cancel it. So we had to postpone when the national emergency was declared on the 13th of March, we had to cancel it. And it's postponed until April. Um, but even now we're, we're, I don't know what's going to happen. So I haven't sent out my space in a venue that we can be outdoors that is open air. 
it's, you know, on the water, there's a good amount of breeze, but even still, uh, you know, who knows, who knows what's going to happen in April uh, and the time between then. So um, that's what I want to share with you news wise. And let me just notate our time here. And I just want to thank um, Ron and Pat. I know Pat, I've seen you're doing a lot of work this morning. A lot of folks are getting all upset with our discussions about gross negligence when it comes to um, super spreading events in the political world. You know, we just have to, we have to call it what it is. And, you know, my encouragement for all of you is to not follow those actions. Wear a mask all the time. Uh, if you are in an enclosed space, please protect your eyes and just be really cognizant of the different risks that you're taking. And you might want to evaluate, you know, do one high risk activity in a week, you know, and limit everywhere else. Okay. Uh, and then God forbid, please do quarantine. The idea of quarantining for in close exposure, you know, a, a close contact of 15 minutes or more, it requires a quarantine of 14 days. Uh, there's a lot of discussion of these folks not doing that, which is just absurd and again, negligent. Okay. Let's dig into our news today. So uh, uh, the gist of today's topic, I want to highlight six tips, six ways that you can improve, restore, repair, rebalance your digestive process, uh, our gut health, and that's what we call our digestive process. And our digestive process begins from our mouth to our anus, okay? So it's a whole entire can, you know, channel way from chewing our food to it exiting our body. There are multiple organs involved, and it is critical that we look at improving and optimizing our gut health. 80% of your immune response is derived by your gut. And so if you are concerned about your immunity, you want to improve your immunity, you want to optimize your immunity, it becomes really critical that you uh, balance and restore and rejuvenate your digestive process. So I'm gonna share with you a few ways to do that. Some of these might be new for some of you, others it's just gonna be repetitive and that's okay. Just reiterate some really key foundational items. The first, and I categorize this in kind of its, its methodology, you know, do this, do this, do this, kind of in this order. The first thing that we need to do, if you are dealing with any type of gut imbalances or digestive grievances, autoimmunity, it's really critical that we restore, rebuild, repair, and kind of restart. We, oh, here's Daisy. We reset the digestive process. So a colostrum, a therapeutic colostrum, like this is pure, pure, um, just high quality colostrum in a powdered uh, liposomal form. So again, this is going to be a, a very specialized therapeutic delivery method. But this is by a brand I love. It's called um, Sovereign Labs. It's their Pro Colostrum LD. This is a powder. This is the sample pack. So this is what my giveaway is today. Once this video gets edited for all of you on the live, comment and just, you know, give me a comment related to this video or, you know, any comment about why you need colostrum. I welcome that. Um, for all of you watching on the replay, just comment down below. But this is going to be uh, a really critical aspect of restoring uh, and rejuvenating your digestive process. So I want to share with you a few things that colostrum does. So colostrum has just this, and, and let me just hold on, let me tell you a little bit about colostrum. So when babies are born, and these are all mammals, when all mammals are born, the first milk, the first nutrient from the mother is actually colostrum, not breast milk. And it, they, we call it liquid gold. It looks totally different. Um, and it is what kicks off and establishes the infant, the baby's digestive process. For those of us like me that were not breastfed, we have completely missed out on that. And we know that digestive systems, gut health, microbiota, the healthy bacteria in the gut um, is different in babies that get colostrum and are breastfed and babies that don't. So if you are not breastfed, you have to have this, this stuff, this is critical. Um, so a therapeutic dosing of this for two or three months is a good idea. You can take it all the time, but it has all these different things that are just absolutely, absolutely powerful in um, creating a rest, restored, rebalanced, rejuvenated, basically a reset to your digestive process. So colostrum contains immune factors, it's antimicrobial, 
It also contains growth factors that are very helpful to restoring and rebalancing leaky gut and any imbalances you might have. It also contains healthy hormones. It has ma macronutrients and it also contains minerals. It gives you passive immunity by restoring and healing the gut. It actually, there's a lot of science behind this. So there's a lot of clinical research that the um, use and in, in, in taking colostrum in therapeutic way can actually um, heal GI imbalances. And this also includes stomach GI, you know, H. pylori issues, stomach acid issues, uh, you know, IBS, Crohn's, you know, chronic colitis, um, inflammatory bowel disease, all of that, it wards off infectious agents. Um, and it provides immune, uh, the nutrients for the immune system to be supported and to grow. So um, and thanks, Pat, again, I just want to reiterate, we're a natural health and wellness channel, please, we're going to focus on health. If you don't have anything nice to say about health, then you might want to go elsewhere right now. Um, the other thing is colostrum is very bioavailable. And this particular colostrum comes from uh, grass fed bovine sources. Um, it's standardized. So this brand actually does the whole processing. They're the only brand right now that does uh, very specialized testing to ensure that what you're getting is actually colostrum. Um, but it's bioavailable in the liposomal form. And so it has this kind of uh, protective coating, if you will, that allows it to get past some of the early stages of digestion and get to the root of the small intestine. That's where it does its magic. We call it nature's first food. It has immunoglobulins that creates antibodies against pathogens, i.e. viral, bacterial invasions, candida, all of that. Um, and Pat, go ahead. If you just want to block some folks that are just obviously obnoxious, go ahead and do that. Um, it, I want to share with you some of the um, items, the uh, immunoglobulins that are binding and that neutralize pathogens. It has IgM, IgD, IgG, it has IgA. The IgA is known for protecting vaginal mucosa um, and the, um, the mucosal areas of the gut, the lungs, and the vaginal region. That's really critical for the situation we find ourselves in with this really intense viral uh, lung related disorder. So that can help support some of the imbalances. So this is, I've got a link down below. They're a fantastic company. They also have bioidentical polypeptides. I've talked a little bit about these, I think last week, there's a poly, uh, a polypeptide, bioidentical polypeptide. Um, this is colostrum and, but it's, it, it's also enhanced at kind of a, you know, 50th level. <laughs> so you can take the spray or the capsules with, uh, and you can do this also. You want, if you're dosing with this, this is a powder and you want to take it all on its own away from other microbiotic or, or um, macronutrients. So that's number one, colostrum is number one. Number two is to help your body digest the foods you're consuming. A lot of the times a lot of the time when I work with folks digestively, it, it really comes down to how, what are they eating? How are they eating it? Are they chewing it properly to be able to get that, we call it chyme. It's the kind of contents in the stomach that then allows it to be further broken down. A lot of times people are just taking two or three bites and swallowing. So that's like number one, you want to really chew up your food, you know, 14, 15, 20 times you're kind of counting as you're chewing. It sounds monotonous, but it is really critical you know, that beginning process. The next stage of that is we need to make sure we have enough digestive enzymes, lipase, um, you want your uh, protease, you want all of the um, digestive enzymes, the enzymes that actually break down and, and allow us to utilize the foods. So, you know, we have carbohydrates, we have fats, we have all different types of aspects of the foods that we're eating. And the organ that releases digestive enzymes our pancreas often is doing other work. And so it might be balancing our blood sugar. It might be trying to offset the blood sugar imbalances from high cortisol levels. Um, and once we hit 30, that process of the pancreas starts to decrease. So it becomes really critical that we supplement with digestive enzymes. And these are literally just capsules. The best way to take a digestive enzyme is not with your meal. 
you want to take it about 30 minutes before your meal. So it's like a pre-meal prep. So you take your digestive en enzymes on an empty stomach with water, and that then allows it to get through and to kind of be in the duodenum. This is the kind of link between the stomach and the small intestine. They get in there, and then when the food comes in, it's able to digest it. And that is amazing. Like I have folks that um, have, and, and this is really common, a lot of, uh, especially a lot of keto uh, patients will have um, protein, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be protein deficient, and yet they're eating a lot of protein. And it's because they're lacking in pro protease, the protein enzyme, the digesting enzyme of, of protein. Um, one of the things that I find is that folks that have protein uh, deficiencies from a lack of this digestive enzyme is they'll always be like moving their feet. Like, you know, so they're sitting and like, I have my legs crossed right now. Their feet might be going, they might have restless leg syndrome. Um, they have fatigue. And then we can also see sometimes hair and, and nail quality, uh, is just not there. And that's because the building block never got broke and never got broken down to be able to be utilized. And so digestive enzymes allow you to break down and utilize all the micronutrients and, and macronutrients of your food in a healthy way. When food is not broken down by a digestive enzyme, it now is not digested and it can pose a really, really big problem in your gut. And undigested food is a leading source of leaky gut. It's a leading source of autoimmunity. It's the leading source of weakened immunity. It's a leading source to being a feeder for pathogens, i.e. bacteria. It can offset the balances within our body. And so it really becomes critical that you do that. And, and, you know, so people will ask, okay, well, when do I take digestive enzymes? So I look at it as what's on your plate. What's the mix of items on your plate? Um, if you are consuming, like I'll have an apple here, middle of the morning, I'll have an apple with my almond chia mix with my other powders and I add to it. Um, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily take a digestive enzyme for that because it's more of a raw food. But if I'm going to have a steak or I'm going to have, you know, steamed vegetables with some uh, lentil brown rice pasta, I'll take a digestive enzyme before that. Um, so you want to look at kind of what are you eating? And if you have to cook it, you for sure want to make sure that you're taking a digestive enzyme. OK, so my raw food eaters, my food folks that are juicing you know, our plants naturally come with their enzymes. And that, that is why when you're a raw food enthusiast or you eat more raw or gently steamed food, it actually improves your digestion. That's where a lot of the juicing comes from. It, you know, there are so many benefits, but one of the major benefits is you actually are getting access to the core nutrients and the value of the food that you're eating. Okay, so that's number two. So one colostrum, two, we have in digestive enzymes, two, or three, it's probiotics. And I like to have food-based probiotics plus uh, supplemental probiotics. Um, and, and when we're talking about probiotics, it's the fermentation. It's the, you know, drinkable, like this happens to be a kefir, um, a type of kefir or yogurt milk. Uh, and I, this is the only one that I will consume um, if I do any type of dairy because it is literally just very, very clean. Um, but you can have a nut yogurt, you can have nut kefir, you can make your own kefir. Um, even goat kefir is really big. Um, and then we get into like beet kvass, so it's fermented, uh, sauerkraut, uh, we see pickles, pickled everything that is very good. Kimchi is in that category. So making sure you're adding the foods first, I always go food first, and then supplement. Um, I also recommend having multi-strain probiotics when you're consuming them. I also like to have people alternate every month, switch out your probiotics because that gives your body um, a good balance. And thanks, John. He says, thank you. Keep up the good work. Thanks, everybody. Um, and as far as uh, ages, all ages can benefit from these. So I see a question, Emily. Um, there are... Um, in many cases, if you have children, like I have a child in my family, um, you can take like digest gold or even the colostrum. It's the powder form. You can, uh, you know, take out a capsule and you could do half or quarter of a dosing. So a lot of times kids under the age of 12 
will be half of the adult dose. Hopefully that's helpful. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take a little of my stress, stress relief tea. I had, I'm on stress relief tea this morning because I had literally, I had a COVID work nightmare last night. It was the craziest thing in my dream. I had to, we, my clinic for some reason was back open and, but it was my old wellness center from Florida and multiple rooms. And I had staff there and nobody was, they were not social distancing. I was getting really upset about it. I think it was the preparation of today's video, to be honest with you. Plus, you know, some folks are sending stuff to the clinic that's not open. So I had that on my mind. But wow, it was, I literally woke up and was like, oh my gosh, I was so traumatized. Um, okay. So going back to our list. So we're halfway there. We've got colostrum, digestive enzymes, and probiotics. Next up, and I have a list for one of my probiotics. Um, you know, probiotics really you want to look at multi-strains. Number four is actually the food for the probiotics. So not only taking a probiotic, but you need what we call prebiotics. It's the food. It's food that feeds the bacteria. And prebiotics are going to be dense fibrous content. Um, one of my favorite uh, prebiotics is called inulin or chicory root. Fantastic. You can, you can actually grow that. Um, you can get chicory root or inulin fiber in a powder. You can add that to your smoothies. You might note that some of your healthy like protein bars and things like that. I actually think I have one right here. There's a new bar that I found at, um, let me see. I thought it had inulin. Of course my, um, yeah, it doesn't have inulin. Um, but a lot of times there will be protein bars that will have inulin, but inulin is something that you can add in. And then also one of my favorites is Dr. O'Hara's. Um, it, it, it's, it's listed as a probiotic, but honestly it's, it's prebiotic. He actually has the prebiotics from prunes, goji berries, figs, blueberries. This is what it looks like. And it's individually capsuled. Very good. This is, this is when you know you're dealing with a good brand because it's not going to go bad. It's individually packaged. Um, they call them blister packs. Uh, it has mataki, seaweed, uh, wakame, which is seaweed salad, kombu, kelp. And so it has mushrooms. Uh, it has fruit. It has vegetables. It has mushrooms. And then it has an assortment of, of plant-based veggies. Then it has some probiotics, different strains that you don't find, which I love. I love a variety of strains. And then it has the post, post bi, um, postbiotics, like the short chain fatty acids and things like that, amino acids. So I love this as another kind of add on, but definitely you want to make sure that you're increasing your fiber content. Come here, Daisy. Uh, that you increase your, she's sniffing around over there. I got, I've got some new products that she's smelling. Um, so prebiotics, really, really critical that you add those into the mix. You can take these daily. These are the type where it's not as consistent, like before, you know, before every meal, you just take it once, once a day. Um, now let's talk about my number five, uh, you know, number one, colostrum is one of my favorites. Number five is also one of my favorites for a multitude of reasons. It's restorative. It can repair and rebuild and heal an impaired gut lining. It also is great for our skin. It's great for our hair. It's great for our nails. So superficially and anti-aging, I love it. I'm going to share with you. This is, I just grabbed this. Um, this is a bone broth, a keto bone broth that has collagen added to it. So collagen is number five on my list of six items to help improve your gut health. The collagen is is amazing. Collagen is a very dense protein that helps rebuild. It's the building blocks of our skin, our, our musculature. It also is plays a big role in our soft tissue. So for a lot of folks that have injuries or, uh, you know, are losing hair because of stress and hormonal imbalances, collagen is really good for that. If you are trying to reduce wrinkles, oh my gosh, ladies, okay, I'm going to talk to you ladies, because we're all kind of focused on how do we reduce wrinkles, and slow the cellular aging process. Um, collagen's great, great for reducing wrinkles. And, you know, fine lines, you know, crow's feet lines up here, really great. It's also good for the hands, the decollete. So overall, adding collagen to your day, 
Uh, and I like to I like to add in a few. So I'll share with you. This happens to be one. I'm actually out of my next recommendation, but I've gotten on order. Gabriel and I eat it all the time. Uh, so I will do a bone broth um, and it has, uh, so bone broth is, is going to be a natural collagen source. Um, and bone broth has been something that's been around for thousands of years. Cavemen, cave women had bone broth. It kept them very healthy. You know, they used all parts of the animals and the carcass and the bones and the soft tissue and the ligaments are all very powerful. The other form is in a powder form. And so you get your either bone broth, you can make your own bone broth, these just happen to be frozen. I love them because I also have MCT. It has butter oil. You know, I was doing a little bit more keto in the wedding prep zone. I was full on collagen all the time. Um, I love to take further food is one of my favorite collagen brands, high quality, awesome stuff. They have just a, a plain, just flavor free collagen powder you can add to your smoothies and things like that. They have, now this is like a like triple whammy. They have a chocolate collagen powder that also has reishi mushroom. So you get your, your chocolate. So it's giving you a flavor. Uh, the, the actual chocolate is very anti-inflammatory. It's good bioflavonoids. The reishi is good for your immunity, very powerful. And then you get your collagen. And what I do, I've shared, I think back in my, Vlogmas of December of 2019, I share with you all my collagen butter uh, recipe. I will mix my nut butters. I will add in the collagen powder, the chocolate powder. You know, it's, it's literally reishi chocolate and then me, the, um, the collagen all in one mix. You just, I do a scoop and I mix it up with my nut butter and then I will slice up uh, for Gabriel and I, Gabriel loves it. It's really great for kids because you can you can put a lot of stuff in nut butters and they'll eat it. Um, but it 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 flavors up the nut butter, so it's like this really nice little sweet kind of hit. Give you the chocolate and mm, yummy, and you get your collagen. But you're also eating a raw food in the nut butter and like I have chia. I usually do like the nutso. I have chia and flax and a whole bunch of other things. But that is, that's my recommendation. So if you can't do a bone broth, you know, making it is very intense, but you can get, you know, Bonafide's a really good brand. It's really high quality. Um, you can do that and, or you can do the powder. Um, so there's a lot of different things. And, you know, like it's, there's been times where, well, I'll just put a powder. I'll just put a thing of powder in my ciggies and mix it up. So, you know, you can blend these two. Last and final, oh my gosh, this is my favorite. And I want to, I want to talk first, before I go into this, the last and final is really all about moving the bowels. Um, so a big part of a healthy gut process is to have healthy bowel movements. You want to have two to three bowel movements a day. I know it's shocking for a lot of people because a lot of folks are not having more than one. And some folks are not having a single bowel movement a day. Um, it's possible for you to improve that, especially when you're adding colostrum the, the pro, probiotics, the prebiotics, and the digestive enzymes. This mix, if you've got chronic constipation, this six, these six things, it'll get things moving. Um, so one of the things that really is critical is to not have content sitting in your digestive process. And what that means is you don't want to have uh, toxic matter. Um, you don't want to have cholesterol that's supposed to be evacuating out of your body. You don't want to have estrogens that are supposed to be leaving your body, pathogens, bacteria. You want all of that to get out and move out. So our large intestine, the whole digestive process is a detox process. It, the latter part of it is the waste removal and we need the waste removal to operate and function optimally. So, you know, basically every time you eat, this is the way a good, healthy process. We see this with babies, you feed them. And sometimes while you're feeding them, they'll have a bowel movement. I just remember, you know, feeding Gabriel and be like, Oh my gosh, you know, sometimes it's like so explosive as little babies. But as we age, and depending on the food that we're eating, and then the the state of our just digestive process, some of folks have, you know, intense therapies of, um, antibiotics, and that changes the di digestive process. Over time, people morph out of consuming food and, and pooping, you know, it, it literally eat your food, and then you poop. And it's usually within healthy 20 minutes of eating to moving out. When that it doesn't exist, and it's okay, there's no, you know, I say this all, and I don't want any of you to feel 
like, oh my gosh, I'm sick or ill or, you know, no, no recovery from this. I, or I'm not trying to be critical. Um, but, you know, the standard American diet and also our stress levels and the way we kind of function, a lot of times we just have gone away from listening to our body. You know, there's a signal um, in the rectum, in the colon and the rectum when it's time to release contents. And a lot of times, especially women, um, we just ignore it. We just completely ignore it. And you know what? We ignore something long enough. It just stops. It stops bothering you. It just the signal stops. But I promise, and I've seen it all the time, you can reestablish that signal. And so when you do feel a bowel movement, the need to have a bowel movement, sometimes it's mental. You just got to kind of be in that space, acknowledge it and have a bowel movement. But the most effective way to get that, to get the um, kind of uh, mobility of your digestive process is to add in dandelion, dandelion tea. tea. This is a roasted, organic roasted dandelion root. I'm growing dandelion in my garden, but it never flowered. So I'm hoping next spring I get dandelion. But this is a tea bag. And um, one tea bag is the equivalent of 1500 milligrams of dandelion. Okay, holy cow. Dandelion, this is better than any, any dosing you can get in a capsule. And I love it because it's hydrating. So a lot of times we're dehydrated, we might lack magnesium, all the probiotics, all that. Dandelion will get the bowels moving. And one tea bag is strong. You, I can usually get two or three cups out of a tea, tea bag. Um, most of the time I do two or three tea bags and then fill up my water throughout the day. Um, if you like a rooted, nice flavor, it's fantastic. The, it's just, it's wonderful, but it's really dark and it's a different flavor. This is my coffee alternative. I switch people off of coffee and move them here. I also put people on coffee detoxes because a lot of times people will drink coffee because they feel like coffee gets their bowel, you know, the bowels moving. And it does. Some of the stimulation of the coffee is that it, um, you have a warm substance that's in the stomach and then where, you know, the way the process is, this, the large intestine will be touching and there can be some warmth from that. So you get muscle relaxa relaxation. Overall, this is a much better choice. It doesn't stimulate your central nervous system. It doesn't cause your cortisol levels to increase. It's not dehydrating. It is very balancing. And dandelion root, what it does is it causes your liver to release more bile. Bile is a sudsing agent. It's like a soap and it's just, it's like a lubricant. So if you've got a squeaky door, put a little WD-40 or whatever, and it's no longer squeaky. Well, this is like WD-40 of the digestive process. It's probably my best kind of way to identify it, but definitely wanted to um, share this because this is really easy. And these you can get Target now, Publix, a lot of the grocery stores are finally selling this brand is one of the best tea brands because their tea bags are natural. They're not plastic. And this is something I really want to highlight to you all. A lot of times you're thinking, okay, I'm going to drink tea and so good for me. I'm going to drink my immune tea or, you know, smooth move, whatever. And, and by the way, avoid the smooth move. Senna and uh, Cascara Sagrada, that stuff is awful for your digestive process. So dandelion uh, this particular brand, Traditional Medicinals, they are one of the cleanest tea bag sources. Um, a lot of the brands, even Yogi Tea, it has some plastics in it, depends on which of them. Uh, but this is really, really high quality. And I'll show you what the tea bag looks like. <clears throat> oh, and the other thing that I love about Traditional Medicinals is their little tea bags come with a little quote. So I love it. It's a nice little reminder. So today's quote is, and all in all things of nature, there's something of the marvelous, Aristotle. So this is a tea bag, but literally, and it's really hard. It's it's just really hard to see. Uh, but this is this is a a natural tea bag. It's not plastic made. Um, so you know, as far as brands, traditional medicinals has come out with a ton. They actually even have probiotic teas. Um, they have oh, they've got a really good ginger tea. Really, really awesome. Um, okay, so Edgy BR09, curious as to why she says to avoid Senna. So Senna um, actually is very caustic to the musculature. So our small and large intestine, you know, there's some muscle and movement and involvement. Um, it can actually 
minimize it. One, it creates a reliance on the herb um, and senna is an herb and it um, can actually do more damage. So it's not good for the nerves. It's not good for the mechanisms of the small intestine. And that is a natural laxative, even though it's natural, um, you know, you, uh, laxatives are not the way to go. And so my alternative to a laxative is dandelion. Um, it is great, especially I have a lot of patients that are post-surgical, you know, and when you're coming out of a hospital or I just want to thank all of you for tuning in. We've had a really busy morning here and your patients, <laughs> I hate running late to our show. Um, so I hope this was helpful again to, you know, today's giveaway, is one of these little freebie packets, and this is 50 grams, you'll get 10 servings. So 10 days. And I, 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 I like, I use this. Um, it is amazing the results you can get with this. Um, and especially to for immunity, this alone is very powerful at modulating and helping your body regulate your immune system. Um, so it's fantastic. So Saunders S, your sister would definitely benefit. Wacka troll, <laughs> Pat and Ron are wacka trolling today. Yeah, lots of trollers are out. So it, you know, it is what it is. Part for the course. It could be why it took me so long to get on. Um, but definitely, I hope this was helpful. Six tips today for you to improve your um, gut health. And ultimately, that improves your immunity. If you guys um, are interested, I on Instagram for all you ladies and all you gentlemen that have ladies in your lives. Um, I'm posting daily breast health tips, my breast health course, we're gonna have a flash sale on it in the next few days. Um, as well. So stay tuned for that. And Wednesday, we'll have another live show. Friday, we'll have our Q&A. And the following week, Gabriel, they have their fall break. He's going to be out the entire week. Uh, so I will probably, I will have to see with our schedule. I'm going to be doing homeschooling, like legit homeschooling with him. That week, we're just going to continue on his education. So our mornings might get a little crazy. So I'm going to kind of wait and see, but I may or may not be on that week. But just stay tuned. Um, and I really I'm so excited to see all of our regulars and really appreciate Pat and Ron for being on board as our moderators and just want to thank each and every one of you. If you're curious about these products, they're affiliate links, they do support our channel. Any way you can support our channel, I'm grateful for. I spent a lot of time preparing all this uh, information, the live chat, the super chats, all of that I'm grateful for. So I really, really appreciate each and every one of you and Ron and Pat, especially for the whack of trolls <laughs> today. So I know, you know, and I will probably keep updating a little bit as we go, but um, you know, for, for us folks, I will say this for us folks in the, the, the health and wellness and medical space. And I have friends that are, it, you know, caring for COVID patients right now. Um, to say the medical professionals are aghast is and and completely blown away by uh, negligence that is happening is a very serious understatement. So, um, all right. Well, thanks everybody. I appreciate your time. Give it a thumbs up. Hit the share button and tune in on Wednesday. We'll have another show, live show with lots of news and details. And I hope all of you get out, start healing your guts, improving your immune system. And definitely please wear your masks, stay safe. And I will see you all on, um, on Wednesday. And I'm sure today the, the butterflies, the caterpillars should chrysalis, which is really exciting. I was, I was so excited. This is the craziest thing ever. So Jenny from the block, I will totally keep you posted. I'm going to be kind of stalking them a little bit today. And I will see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Ron and Pat. Appreciate your help. Bye.